let's talk about what's new this year in Xcode 15. There was a lot that was announced, but I'm gonna keep this to things most developers will use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you wanna go deeper, check out the WWDC sessions in the Xcode 15 release notes that I'll link in the description. Last disclaimer, I am on Xcode 15 Beta 1. The full release version will be out in September of 2023, so if there are minor differences, that's why I'm on the very first beta. First up, let's talk about bookmarks. I think this is a really cool feature, so I'm gonna click into my subscription dismiss button here, right-click it, and you can see I can bookmark the specific line or the whole file. I'm gonna bookmark the specific line. So you see over here on the right, really small, I get a little bookmark. And then up here in the left in the navigator, there's a bookmark icon, click on that, here are your bookmarks. So I'm gonna right click this and you can see edit description. So I can say, this is a button style experiment, check back after results. Hit return, and now you see on the right, I get the inline description of my bookmark. Now, as you can imagine, there's a million different reasons why you'd wanna bookmark a specific error of your code for you to revisit at a later date so you don't forget it. And again, this bookmark feature puts them all in one place. Let's do one more here. So view modifiers, right? This was me giving specific corners a corner radius. Well, iOS 17 introduced a new way to do this. So again, I'll right click, bookmark this specific line. Now that it's bookmarked, go to my bookmarks tab. You can see both of them. And then if I right click, edit description, say iOS 17 fixes this. And now I have more than one bookmark. So I do wanna show you if you highlight them both, right click, new group, you can put different bookmarks. Whoops, I didn't do from selection. So there you go. You can put your bookmarks in a folder, name that folder, today's work. And you can treat them like a little checklist. So watch when I hover, you see the little dot there? Okay, that one was done. Now that one was done. And then you can go back and delete your bookmarks when you're done with the day's work. That little to-do list is just one example of how to use them. Again, there's a million different examples of how you'd wanna use your bookmarks. One last thing with bookmarks that I think is really cool, you can save search queries. So I'm gonna hit search, and let's say we're searching for anywhere I'm doing compiler conditional. So we'll say if OS Mac OS. Search for that, there we go, here's the search results. What I can do if I right click on one of them, I can say bookmark find if OS Mac OS. So now in my bookmarks, that search query is saved and I can minimize it. And if my other bookmarks were there, which I just deleted, they would still be there too. So you can see this bookmark tabs will be just a list of all your bookmarks so you can save areas in your code to revisit later. And while I'm searching for this if OS, Mac OS, let's go to my paywall view. As you can see in my notes, I'm experimenting with a highly combined view of iOS, Mac OS, and iPad OS. And a lot of creator view, they're separate files, but I'm experimenting with my paywall, keeping them all here. So I have a lot of, you know, if OS, Mac OS do this, else this, right? You can see that in the code. But what's cool about Xcode 15, because this file specifically was confusing to me, as I scroll down here, you can see this is dimmed out. And that's because this is if it's Mac OS. And if we look at my build target, I'm building for iOS right now. And if I switch to Mac OS, you can see this section is now highlighted and then my iOS section is dimmed. So basically it helps you realize what like build target you're in. Cause if you see the dimmed out code, you know you're not targeting the iOS stuff. So again, this is highlighted, this if OS Mac OS, let me go back to iOS and then this should dim here. There we go, it dimmed. So very helpful to let you know like what you're working on in the code. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally edited the Mac OS section when I meant to be editing the iOS section. And you could argue that I shouldn't have all this in one file, but like I said, this was an experiment. Now let's talk about some code completion updates in Xcode 15. And for that, we'll focus on this VStack, which is the giant elevate your YouTube game text on the right. And the reason it's in a VStack is because I did have a subheading in an earlier iteration and I just never deleted the VStack, even though all that's in it is one text. That is irrelevant for what we're gonna talk about, but in case you were wondering. The autocomplete will now give you different permutations when something has a lot of parameters. Classic example, let's talk about frame. Look at all of these parameters. In Xcode 14, I believe, if you held option, you can now get all of them, or you can start doing some autocomplete with like width and height, and you can see them highlighting. That was last year. Now, if I tap right, I get every single permutation. You can see just min width, just ideal width, and I'm gonna scroll down, there's a lot of them, right? There's every single possible permutation if you want it. Now, of course, you can type out what you want, and this is probably an extreme example where there's so many different permutations, but to illustrate the point, if you have a bunch of parameters, you can hit right and get just the combination. So let's actually, to demonstrate, go back up to frame where you just get width, height, and alignment. If I hit right on this one, that's a, a little more reasonable of a list, but you can see you get the different permutations. So if you wanted a frame with just height, there you go, it's right there. But let's go to one of these long ones to illustrate a different point here. So we'll go to one that has four parameters, right? There we go. So that's the one I want. Let's say min width is 200, ideal width 250, max width infinity, min height, you know, 200. When you have a function or a modifier like this, some people like it on one line, 
but a lot of people also like it on multiple lines. So you can hit right click, refactor, format to multiple lines, click on that, and then you get the nice where each parameter has its own line. Autocomplete can now read from various sources. So let's say I wanna do a new Swift file in here. Say we're doing like an onboard model, new Swift file. We'll say new onboard model. This is just kind of, I'm gonna delete this later, so no big deal. But now you see this, I'm gonna do struct and you would always have to type it to make sure it matched your file name. But now it can actually read from the file name, right? I have new onboard model is nowhere else in my code except for that new file that I just created and it gives you the autocomplete. So nice little quality of life thing. Autocomplete can now read from file names as well as a few different other places now. Okay, back to our onboard start view. Let's talk about one of my favorite new additions um, that I've just started playing with and that is quick action. So basically anything Xcode can do, right? We're looking at my canvas. Let's say I wanna get rid of the canvas. You do command shift A and it pulls up this quick actions thing. So I can just type canvas, okay, click on it, canvas gone. Oh no, I want my canvas back, command shift A. Canvas, hit return, there it is. Let's say I want my mini map up, command shift A. Mini map, there it is, there's a mini map. How many times have you been like, ah, I need my mini map or I need my canvas, where is it? And you're like looking for it in the UI to hide it or unhide it. Again, Command Shift A for quick actions can do pretty much anything. Maybe you just archived something and you wanna send it to test flight. So you do organizer, bam, there's your organizer window. Maybe you just wanna change your theme. So let's go Command Shift A, theme. I want my theme to go to classic light. Hell no, get me out of here. Command Shift A, let's go midnight. Let's get that theme back to midnight. So basically anything Xcode can do, do Command Shift A, open up your quick actions and start typing. And there you go, it's right there. Now let's scroll down a bit and talk about the previews, right? Here's the previous syntax for a preview, where I'm gonna comment that out. And now, thanks to Swift macros, you do hashtag preview. You can see I get a autocomplete here. I don't need these parameters. These are my environment variables, but can do preview with just that and do a command B, but build failed. And as you can see, preview is only available on iOS 17 or newer. So. While this new preview syntax is super clean, super nice, and works in UIKit, which we'll get to in a second, it is only available on Xco or iOS 17 and later. So let's go up our target to iOS 17, go back to our onboard start view. Yep, let's do Command Shift A, get that canvas back up. There it is, refresh the preview. And there we go, there's our preview with much simpler syntax with hashtag preview. Now, like I said, this does work with UIKit. So I've switched projects. We're no longer in Creator View. I'm in GitHub Followers, which is a course you can check out at seanallen.teachable.com if you're interested in building a whole app programmatic UI using UIKit. Here you go. Here's an example of what we call GF button. It's just a custom UI button with some custom styling. I can do hashtag preview. Give me my open and close curly brace. It's a little different than Swift UI. I have to declare an instance of either a UI view or UI view controller. This specifically is gonna be a UI view. You know, a UI button is a subclass of a UI view if you're not super familiar with UIKit. So I wanna create that instance. We'll say let button, or you could just return this, but I'm gonna break this out into two steps. Equal, and we'll do GF button with my initializer. We'll say the color is red. The title is, I don't know, set date. This is just kind of dummy data for us to play with the UI. System image name, calendar. This is an SF symbol. And like I said, I need to return button. You know, I could have just returned the initializer, but broken that up into two steps. Now it's just like we're in Swift UI, right? We have this nice preview. There's our GF button. You can see the calendar SF symbol that we use, the color of red and then the set date title. But now I can play with my UI in real time, like on line 32 here, corner style medium. Let's say I want to do corner style capsule. Bam, real time, you can see it changes to a capsule. Maybe the image placement here on line 44, instead of leading, I want trailing. Now the image will be on the trailing side of the button. So super cool in UIKit now. We get real like almost hot reloading preview of our UI in UIKit. Again, you need to be on iOS 17, but yeah, this is a really great addition when you're building UI with UIKit. Okay, minimize GitHub followers, the project. Now we're back in creator view. Let's go to our asset catalog because this is a nice little quality of life addition too. So this is, you know, where you have all your, your colors. I only have one color in this project, sidebar selected gray, but Many of you may have created custom colors or you have images like this sign in with Google. In fact, let's search with sign in with Google here. Sign dash in with, so we can see where I'm using it. Oh, not, not with, just sign in dash Google. There you go. So you see when I'm using it in this Google auth view, which I'll throw up here just to give you visual context, you can see when you had to use the image, you had to do this string. And anytime you use a string, it's not very safe, right? If you have a typo, if you have sign in with Google, it'll break, it won't work. 
or you'd have to take the extra step of taking all these images and creating like constant variables for them. So you could do like images dot sign in with Google for more safety, but now that's already built in pretty much. So instead of this image with a string of sign in with Google, let me comment this out. You would do image and now resource. See this resource parameter? Now any color or image gets a built in symbol, right? You can just do dot. And here are all my images that I can do, right? So you can see here is sign in Google. And you can see it took out the dashes and the description here, it says the quote sign dash in dash Google asset catalog image resource. But you get this built in safety now for free with X code 15. So this is a huge quality of life improvement. I love it. And then of course below it, you can see what we talked about earlier. My Mac OS version of the image uh, is grayed out because it's in that conditional. So a lot of things working in tandem right here in this little example. Now let's go to the source control navigator, which is gonna be, here's my files, right next to the files, this little box with the X looking in it, source control navigator. I love this because we can now kind of review our commits or review our changes all in one place. So if I go to my Google Auth view, I can see the changes. Well, if I click on this, I can see all of them in the different files, right? This is my Xcode project file because I added the new file, new onboard, right? The Xcode project is usually kind of big and messy, but you can minimize it here, as you can see. And I can go through all the files that I have uncommitted changes in, right? You can see what I just did in Google Auth view, what we just talked about. You can see when I created that new onboard model struct. And here you can see where I added that frame and I, I commented out the old preview, added the new preview. So again, right here in Xcode, we have a great way to review our changes before we you know, either submit a pull request or commit them you know, to the branch, however you're managing your source control. Before I would have to do this on GitHub, you know, in a separate website. So this is great that I can do this right in Xcode and make any changes or remove changes, right? Let's say uh, I don't want this Google Auth view change right here. I can just right click, discard changes, discard the changes and it's gone. So that's what I'm gonna do to all these, right click, discard changes, basically undo everything I've done so far uh, in this little test project that I've been, you know, messing around with in here. So we're just gonna discard all those. And now my project is back to what it was like before I started making, you know, all these changes uh, to show you how the new Xcode 15 works. The console is now more organized, easier to read. It's color coded. If you're using a logger, uh, a lot of the details are hidden behind disclosures. And I just have to show a screenshot of this because I don't have a good example myself, but you can see here, the console does look a little different, easier to read, color coded. And also there's a lot more tools for testing. There's an entire WWDC session on this topic. So if you want to dive deeper, I recommend that. I am not a testing pro and I don't have a good testing suite in any of my projects to show you. So I got to rely on screenshots and point you in the right direction of the WWC video. That's what's new when it comes to the day-to-day -day stuff in Xcode 15. Like I said, if you want to dive deeper, I got links in the description to WWDC sessions and the release notes. We'll see you in the next one.